get an, an opportunity to, to get coached with you maybe later. But if you were to, in a nutshell, share some of the things that you will, you will instruct, so to speak, a Christian or a believer in business, whether they are starting or they are continuing, what are some of these fundamental pillars, these principles that they need to adhere to? Well, first of all, the business idea needs to be really, really examined. You don't just wake up in the morning and you say, this is the idea, let me roll. Yeah. And let me use the, the story of creation. <laughs> if this whole creation thing was a business idea, the Bible says that in the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Mm. It was over the surface of the waters. Mm. Now, the Bible doesn't tell you how long it was there. Mm. Could have been a thousand years. Mm. Could have been a million. And he was hovering and hovering. And then, when the Bible, the Bible says, when God said, let there be, the Bible doesn't say. And then when the mountain went there, he realized it was wrong and he changed it. Mm. No. No. What does it mean? Mm. That during the hovering, mm. God got a sense of the best place to put Mount Everest is this place. Mm. The best place to put Elgon is Uganda. Mm. The best place to put Renzori is Kasese. And That's the Nile, he... to put the source and of the Nile so is Uganda. And when he said, let there be, because he had conceived the Beautiful idea fire. and he had hovered over it, everything just went to the right place. Mm. So when mm. you mm. want mm. to start mm. a business, hover over the idea. Broad <laughs> over it. <laughs> Broad over it. Brood over yeah. it. Yeah, take take your time. Take time and brood over it. And is, someone is will say, but Eunice, what time did you take brooding over it? For me now, I look. Okay, first of all, when you listen to my story and you listen to the journey that I took teaching. That's the voice of Dr. Eunice uh, Dubango, PhD. She's married to Bran Dubango, and they have three beautiful boys. She has a PhD in civil engineering, a project management, master's in engineering management, bachelor's in civil engineering, and has lectured at Makerere University for over 12 years from 2006 to 2018. Currently, she's lecturing at Ndeja University School of Graduate Engineering Studies, and she is the owner and managing director, managing partner of Talitha Store, Eunice Kitchen Limited, and Eunice Culinary School. She's the author of four books, including a yearly women's devotional written each year for the last seven years. I had a discussion, a conversation with her, and it's as deep as it gets, but I felt like we needed a whole school to do this. She is good at what she does, and uh, we had a very, very powerful time introducing this month's theme of believers in business is Dr. Eunice Aduango. Listen and learn. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. 
As such, they have become a hub for African content connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like no content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. And that concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy! Well, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, men, women, boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, whatever place it is you're tuned on to Life Signatures Radio. It's a Wednesday. Wednesdays we normally discuss, we have a conversation on things related to life, purpose, productivity and resilience. And in this month we are talking to believers in business, Christians who are actually in business. And uh, there's some things that we need to learn from them and uh, discuss uh, some of the stories that we can be able to share and see if we can be able to grow or not. And today I made a journey to Eunice Kitchen, the branch in Chirinya. Is it called Chirinya? Yeah, Chirinya Boyogere. Yes, Chirinya Boyogere. Uh, this branch number what? Number three. This is branch number three. So we're talking to Eunice Adubango, Dr. Eunice, actually. <laughs> I'm laughing because of the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, okay, you can introduce yourself <laughs> in the correct manner. Of course, I've already read these people, to these people, your credentials and all that stuff, but how do we pronounce your name? Adubango. Adubango. Yes. Ah, nice. Okay. Dr. Eunice Adubango. Yes. Let's talk about the doctor part first. What is that about? Um, it's a doctorate in engineering huh? by training of civil engineer. So the doctor part is a doctorate in engineering management. Okay. You should see how surprised I am. You had no idea? No, I, I, I thought, I don't know. You thought I was a medical doctor? I thought, honestly, I thought the engineer is your husband. Mm. And you are a doctor in some other things. I'm an engineer, actually. He, is he also a, a, an engineer? Yes, he is an engineer. He's also a civil engineer. We are both civil engineers. Whoa. When did this doctor come, by the way? 2017, no, 2016. Mm, not so long ago. Yeah, about six, end of 2000, no, actually 2015, so it's been about seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So the journey of engineering as you are, you are, you are on it, did you like, first of all, how did you get into it? 
as in is it something that you wanted to do? That I wanted to do. Yeah. Yes and no. Uh yes, uh because I had an uncle that was a mechanical engineer. Mm. But I didn't actually at that point I didn't know the branches of engineering. I just knew he was an engineer. And then the thing in engineering that used to fascinate me was buildings. Mm. So I wanted to be like my uncle mm. who was an engineer but then the engineering field that used to fascinate me was buildings. Mm. Uh, was civil engineering. Mm. So yes, I wanted to but no, it wasn't a very very deep desire. Yeah. It was just that oh, I like the other uncle. I think we are doing well. I think yeah. I want to be like them. And so the no part is I was an A student in school. So every teacher thought that every A student goes to the science class and then does PCM or PCD or whatever and then they end up at the university and everybody thought that the good courses are engineering and law medicine. and medicine mm. and yeah so I I was always in the good stream. I was always on top of the class and then I ended up in Macare and I ended up in civil engineering and then I did it and I passed it so Yeah, your brain somehow gets you where you don't really really want to be but you get. <laughs> did did it grow into you as in did you at the end of the day love it have I didn't a passion for over it? I really love it. My yeah. husband loves engineering, dreams engineering. Yeah. He will die as an engineer. Will my god his epitaph should read the best engineer in the whole wide world. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the only thing I love about engineering is the people. Yeah. I'm a people person, yeah, so yeah. the part of supervising people, right. the Luali on site. Yeah. yeah, so I'm your person who will make the builders do everything with joy and yeah. excitement. Yeah. Ah, uh, but to analyze a building the way my husband does? Nah. Sometimes I wonder. I, I was with him in the same class. Sometimes there are things he does and I'm like Where did that come from? The same class and <laughs> I got better marks or something but like wow what's yeah. that? Yeah, it's a so, gift. You could say it's a gift. Yeah, a actually for him mm. it's it's really a gift. My mm. husband is a very excellent engineer. Mm. All the work he has done he's always head hunted. They Whoa. always look out for him mm. and then also his uh disposition works well for him mm. he's a stickler for perfection mm. so he's, he's, a, a, he's, he's a, a structural engineer right. so he does structure so well so yeah. he will design for you the perfect structure mm. one of the projects that they had handed him for that he did so well that i am proud of, of on his behalf is mm. the spring spring uh silver spring apartments the mm. national housing mm-hmm. you know it was a swamp mm. and the level of earthworks was so huge and it was so bad and even senior engineers would reach and stand there and they'd be like this one no this can't yeah and he went in and he did a really good job mm. so for him it's both a gift it's it's a gift it's a passion it's and then in it's it. he's skilled in it yeah yeah so for him he's actually engineer brand adubang because for yeah. him he's also certified uh, by the certification bodies mm. and i'm not certified so i'm mm. not even allowed to be called engineer unis although out there a person can call me yeah. but as far as an engineer is concerned they will fight if they call me engineer <laughs> <laughs> and me i don't care yeah. You get, right? You're not going to pursue the I'm certification. I'm not going to even fight. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I'll go to heaven. So happy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like yeah. it. Now, again, you're also an author. Yeah. The, the authorship, where did it come from? I'm a, I'm a storyteller. Yeah. I'm a good storyteller. Right. And so I think from the start, mm. I was always telling very good stories. Mm. I am shocked that my teachers didn't pick up on it. Mm. I actually say that if I had done a, a, a course or some form of training in writing, I think I may not even have branched off in food, maybe. Mm. Maybe I would be writing about food. I don't know. So my... My essays were those that the teacher would read in class. Mm. You know the composition in English? Yes. My essay was always read. Like yeah. I kid you not, the teacher would always. So even when I was in my senior four and I was choosing um combinations for senior five, yeah. I wanted to do PCM stroke literature. Right. Was that bad? Yeah. Like I really didn't want to drop literature yeah. and then I was told, "No, you have to do pure sciences." And yeah. I didn't understand why I couldn't do, do literature literature why yeah. i couldn't uh, do stroke literature so yeah. i've always told good stories mm. so then when i reached the university mm. i started to do um 
a, it, then there wasn't much blogging. Yeah. But I used to write an article that I used to call the realms of worship. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm a worship person. Mm. And so I used to write and I used to spend my money, print it, share it with my friends in the fellowship. Mm. And everyone would be like, my God, this is good. And, mm. and because I was as good at literature, mm. everybody liked it. And yeah, so that's how I started. So then the first book that I wrote that I called The Realm, the Realm of Worship, mm-hmm. I also wrote it because I... I reached a point and at church I used to teach on worship. Mm. And then I'm like, but wait a minute, I have a collection of articles that I used to write at the university. Why don't I put together this collection of articles? Mm. And mm. That's the book. Somehow I always know how a story should go. Yeah. Even when I'm reading someone's book, I'm like, yeah. the next thing should be this. Yeah, and yeah, the next yeah. thing should be this. Yeah. And the next thing should be that. Yeah. yeah. So I think in there, born in there, has always been a writer. Mm. Yeah. And doing literature in school mm. helped to sort of was that writer too, mm. too bad. Yeah. So, so when the realm of worship went so well, mm. then I started to write other books. And you're still yeah. writing. And, and I'm and still, still, still in the process of developing even others. Yes. So now knowing what we now know, mm-hmm. g- given that you've gone through what you've already gone through, you had the abilities to do several things. Mm. Uh, if you were to go back to your earlier years and so on, what do you think should have been done. We're not saying that thing, things went wrong and so on, but in terms of nurturing, you have kids and so on, but in terms of raising these kids up, if you juxtapose what you went through and what they're going through, what would you say should be should have been done to you? I think someone should have keenly studied me. Yeah. And then, um, what's the word? Challenged me into the direction of the things they were seeing. Mm. Like like I've told you, anyone who was with me could see that I was a good storyteller. Mm. I mean, even 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 on family tables or what, they you would always the laugh and then they would say, yeah. this is your name. <laughs> yeah, you know, they would say, Nayaka, you missing. You know, she has stories. Yeah. Um, but also then maybe they didn't understand what was going on. Mm. Uh, they were probably not as exposed because, you know, our parents believed in the traditional mm. courses. Mm. Like mm. you have to be a lawyer, you have to be doctor. a pilot, you have engineer. to be a doctor, engineer. Mm. So for them, that that was their focus. But mm. I I think what should have been done is someone should have really studied me, mm. looked at me very well, mm. and pushed me. Mm. You know, gently pushed mm. me, mm. shaped me. Because the Bible says, train a child in the way it should grow, and the amplified version says, according to their gifts and bends. Whoa! Yeah, that's what the amplified says. It okay. says, according to their gifts and bends. Then, when they grow, they will not depart. Whoa. It's not just train a child in the way it should grow, Whoa. but according to their gifts and bends. So, as a parent. I need to look at the gifts and the bends. And then I keep challenging and panel beating and panel beating. And then the child figures it out and yeah. it's like, this is the way. And yeah. then they go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know that's a topic on another day. I mean, yeah. it's a whole topic. <laughs> yes. Because at the end of the day, sometimes we, we are afraid that this Eunice is a storyteller. In the 90s, she's a storyteller. Or maybe in the two, in early 2000s, she's a storyteller. Yeah. But where does she fit? Uh, in in the, in the in the world at the end of the day, I mean, we know and what I makes sense. You, Lawrence, I, I probably wouldn't even be sitting here with you yeah. if I had really uh, done the writing. Yeah, because there are many times I see people who tell stories and people who write, and I don't mean this the bad way. Yeah, I write and I see they've done. I read and I see they've done an excellent job, but I'm like. Color better than that. Yeah. But th- but then I'm like, but that person has been trained. They yeah. have a certain skill I don't have. Yeah. I can write my story and it's beautiful, but it is plain and simple. Yeah. And then someone just puts in a bit of yeah, this and a bit. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm like. Wow. I can actually uh, identify a very excellent writer. Yeah. You understand? I'm yeah. like, wow, he's an excellent writer. Yeah. And I'm like, but actually, if I had their skill, mm. I would do it a hundred percent better. Mm. But then, mm. and that's why I, I tell people that God will try to, he won't try. God will redeem what you lost. I believe God sent me to do the PhD to redeem a bit of that. Okay. Because PhD is about writing. Yeah. So the biggest Thinking thing that I gained writing. out of it was to 
got a bit of skill in writing, mm. but I had missed out on. But mm. I would be big. I mean, why why were our parents not seeing where we fit and yet they were reading Chinua Achebe mm. and yet they were reading Wale Soinka mm. and, you know, they were mm. reading Gugi Wathiongo. Mm. They, they were reading. And you know, Gugi Wathiongo and the Wale Soinkas were not even my generation. Mm. They were almost the generation of my parents. Mm. You get what I mean? Because mm. for us when we were doing literature, all the books we read were Nigerian books. Mm. You know, things fall apart, the mm. concubine, the pearl, the lion and the jewel. You know, it was only one little thing that they threw in of... Mm. Um, a court to be taken. Uh, you know, almost, <laughs> yeah, some Kenyans. It, I yeah. don't know, it was always Kenyans and Nigerians. Yeah, yeah so... I think someone should have studied Miri. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we, we're glad that you know that. And, and I know that your kids uh, yeah. are exposed. I study them you like study a, them. a thesis. Right. <laughs> so that you can shape them and you can expose them, so to speak, to the, the way they, they can explore this world and they can explode in their gifts and in their talents. True. Now, business. Let's talk about business, Christians in business. You've already talked about worship. You used to teach worship and, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Someone will say, but Eunice, you're supposed to be in full-time ministry. Yeah? Mm. What in the world are you doing with the business? I don't even know what they mean by full-time ministry. There you go. Anyway. Let's talk about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm actually in full time ministry. Yeah, with the kitchen. I even think my husband also is in full time ministry. ministry. Yeah. I think if we all do full time ministry, that way we understand full time ministry, then we will really pray for the world to change and it won't change. It won't. So, who is going to go out there and treat the patients? Who is mm. going to go and fly those planes? Who is going to innovate? Who is going to go and teach those children? It's who going is to going be in government. And... Teaching a child, man. I think about my high school teachers, but I also think a lot about my nursery school teachers. Yeah. If that's not full time ministry, what else is it? Oh. Because a child is born like a blank canvas, yeah. and then someone has to teach them that there is what they call a letter, there's the alphabet. Yeah. When you put it together, you form words. Then there are three letter words. Then there is hippopotamus. Then yeah. there is xenophobia. <laughs> then you get what I mean. Yeah. And it is an X, but you read it Z. Mm. You know? Mm. Uh, I don't understand. People have actually told me uh, mm. that you should start a church and everything. Mm. And I don't have a problem with all the people that have started a church. Mm. I think I run a church. Mm. Yeah. In your business. In the business. One I of think the people. It's a camouflage. One of the people that admires it the most. Actually, I should have come with her today to do this interview, but she's in school. Okay. She's teaching my wife. Interesting. She follows you like I don't know what, and she would cherish the 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 opportunity to to have a, a conversation with you because she's in love with business also. Okay. So, wh- and if I open the chat, she would be the first <laughs> member, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But 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 the idea that your business is a ministry, do you think it's understood? in the Christian circles? Do I think it's understood? I don't know if I want to answer that. Do I care if it's yeah. understood? Yeah. No. You don't care? I don't care. Right. Because I'm on a mission, mm. and I understand that mission, and mm. it's not my responsibility to make you understand that mission. It's not your mission. Mm. You get what I mean? Mm. Otherwise, I would be throwing my energy in trying to explain myself. Mm. Uh, there are many things that happen in this business that many people don't know about. Mm-hmm. Even some of the workers sometimes don't even know. Mm. I remember recently, I sat with my managers, and we were going through something in the business, and I actually broke down, and I cried, and I yeah. told them, that guys, if this doesn't work, they are. I showed them there are this number of children that get fees because of Uni's Kitchen. There are this number of ministries that get uh, payment out of this ministry. There are many crusades that won't have, and one of them looked at me in shock mm. because he actually didn't Did not have know. an idea yeah. how many children we pay for fees and everything directly as mm. a business. Whoa. You get. Mm. And he was in so much shock and he said, Dr. Eunice, I wish you had said it like that if I said I didn't need to say <laughs> it like that because then it is going to it's going to even affect the way you, you see things or the way you work out things. Mm. So do I think it's understood? I don't even know, but do I care? 
I don't care. Mm. <laughs> I like that yeah. that stance because it talks about you being uh, full in yourself, your own worth. You don't get it from other people and their comments and so on and so forth. But before we can even proceed in the conversation deeper, what was the origin? Because we now have uh, encountered Eunice, the engineer. <laughs> Eunice, the author. <laughs> that shocked you. But, yeah, actually I'm still shocked. I, I, the, the, the doctor part, to be honest with you, I thought it was dealing with people, stuff, and so on. I knew it was uh, doctorate and all that stuff, but I didn't, I didn't think it was engineering. I'm still shocked. But anyway, the business... Again, just like um, the the engineering, is this something you wanted to do? Is this something you stumbled across? I mean, what was the genesis? This too, I don't think I wanted to do. Yeah? I don't know if I used the word stumbled across. Though. Mm. So this is the story of Yuni's Kitchen. So um, my mother is a very good cook. Mm. If she said to her sisters, if they had a party and mommy said she won't attend, they canceled the party. Mm. Because mommy was like the cook. My mom would cook really good food. And then she loves food, so she visits places. She does food tourism and she just has this palette. She can taste your food and she can tell they put this, they put that, they put the other, and then she will come home and try to reproduce it. Whoa. So we grew up eating lots of good food and... And then she would take us out when new restaurants are opening in Uganda. So Nile Resort, when it opened fresh, when the paint was still smelling, she took us. Colleen, she took us. Mbale Resort, she took us. Like, Whoa. she would take you. And and then she would test this stuff and she would come back. And then she would use the minutest of resources. So I saw my mom cook a bake on a sigiri, like an open sigiri, like yeah. open flame. I saw her bake. I saw, you know, and then she is a disciplinarian. If she was cooking and you were in your bed, you're in trouble. Because if you came to serve that food, she would talk for you. She would be like, eh, hey, ya wami enyo. Now, Pippa, eat it. Oh, like you, meanwhile, the food is very tasty, yeah. but then you're eating when you're on the edge. Yeah, yeah, so in yeah. order for you to enjoy your food in peace, you, you went better. out yeah. and participated. Yeah, yeah. Now, being the firstborn, and my sisters are quite way younger than me, hmm. I actually used to tell my mom that I raised her children, so she needs to help me raise mine. Because <laughs> I'm like, my God, there were only three, but we'd be crossing the road, and I'm like, my mom has too many children. Because I was a child myself, so crossing a road with three. Yeah. So anyhow, long story short, I I grew up always cooking, so I started to develop the love. I picked the art from mom. I got to know most herbs and spices from mom. So I started to love it. So it's it's one of the things that comes so easy for me. Mm. Uh, my husband usually asks me, how do you cook a buffet in an hour? Like, I, when I stand at the cooker at my home, mm. within 45 minutes, I have done a full course. Mm. And, and he usually says, how do you do this? There is a passion, there is a love, there is a desire, there is an understanding of stuff. I, I can't even explain it. It's really a gift in there. Mm. So anyhow, I picked up after my mom. I also can really test food. I would test and I'm like, eh, the turmeric is too much. Mm. Eh, they used rosemary. You know, I, I'm like that. So I leave my former church. I used to go to St. Philip's and Andrew's Cathedral in Mokono. Mm. I'd been a leader there. Eh, I was at those places where I could almost be a canon. Like, man, I really served in that church. Wow. Eh, Eunice was such a big name, big deal. So now I'm getting married and my husband... Uh, says that he wanted to join me in my church. He mm. was in KPC then, what mm. total now. Mm. Then I looked at my husband's disposition and I was like, ah, this guy will just die in this church. Mm. But me, Eunice, mm. throw me in a new place. Mm, I'll try. I will try. Mm. Like, I'll, it will take me a few months to study them. And and right now, if you come to Watoto Church, you would think that I was born in Watoto Church. You would think that I brought brand to Watoto Church. Like, man, when we are moving from the main sanctuary to the car, yeah. I will stop every after a few yeah, steps. My yeah. husband will, walk, will reach the car, wait for me. He understands. 
So I I offered that no. Mm. I knew it was going to be hard because I was so used to my church, mm. but I I offered I said no. Mm. Let me join you. Mm. So I joined KPC then. Mm. Um and then my husband now starts to say okay, maybe you need to join a few groups so that you start to know people, start with a smaller group. So at that time there was a ministry starting called the Apples of Gold mm. for women and in that ministry the women met for six consecutive Saturdays. And they were three hours, and one hour was cooking. Whoa! The other hour was studying the word, mm. and then the other hour was uh, eating together. Mm. So you would cook, study, and then set the table and eat. Mm. Of course, that appealed to me, man. There was cooking, so in my mind, I thought I'm going to go, and these older women are going to teach me to cook. Mm. That's that's really what I thought. Mm. So anyhow, I I go and um, first shock. Week one, the, we cook rice and beans. I'm thinking, yo, guys, like the book showed they were going to teach me uh, from, they were going to teach me uh, starter, yeah. main course, yeah. dessert. So I came with expectations, man. Second week, we cooked uh, rice and gin and sauce. I'm like, dude. And they put me in the group of really amazing women. Eh? You know yeah. those A women in church. You know, even yeah. in church, we be having yeah. those things. Yeah. Eh? So I was like, they put me in the group of these nice people. Yeah. Hey. So in the third week, I went to the lead and I offered to teach them to cook. Wow. And they were excellent teachers of the word, but mm. cooking was just not their thing. So mm. the leader said, are you sure? Of course, asked me so many intimidating questions. Mm. I said, I'll teach you. Mm. She said, where did you study? I said, I didn't study catering, but I'll teach you. So I taught the ladies for the remaining four weeks. Now, Whoa. I told you they were like the A ladies. They yeah. were like the ladies close to the pastor's wife. Yeah. So they shared with the pastor's wife that we have a young girl in our group. Yeah. Eh? You just need her. Yeah. So Auntie Christine brought me onto the ladies' committee. Like mm. that's how I got onto the women's committee. Mm. Before long, I became the chief cooking mentor. Mm. So I was now responsible for all the cooking mentors, for all the teams across the network. Mm. I mm. visited mm. homes. I, so that's even how I started to know people. I got friends. I In a season, I would mentor like 70 women. So I became kind of popular. There was a time in Tinder when if you mentioned apples of gold, mm. you were literally mentioned mentioning units. units. Yeah. So then Auntie Christine shared with all the other pastor's wives. Then I started going across the locations. So mm. I went to West, which mm. is Chengera now. Mm. I went to Duvowa. I mm. like, and then I was responsible for writing all the recipes mm. for the entire system. Mm. I enjoyed it immensely. But during that season, every time I would be teaching, the ladies would ask me, do you have a restaurant? And I would say, no. Mm. It never crossed my mind. And I would be like, okay, do you teach like this for, you you know, for money? I don't know. Whoa. I just show up, I do this thing. And it was exhausting. And I used to spend a lot of money on it. Mm. But it was a passion. There was actually a time I almost miscarried. I was pregnant and I had no idea. Mm. And early months, early weeks, and I would move from one home to another teaching. Now, like, I would, I would tell people, people started to make their shades based on my availability. Mm. So a team would say, we are meeting at nine, so that I go and I teach them. Then another team at ten. So I would drive from one place to another. So I'm standing the whole time and I'm not eating because I would t- cook for them, leave them, go to the next group, leave them, go. To... And then I started to bleed. And then I was like, what's, up? and then when I checked, I was actually mm. expect That's how much I gave of myself into that. Whoa. So fast forward, how does Unis Kitchen start? Now, my father, uh, you know, I lost my father in January. Mm. This year, my father was very close to me. Mm. And he was unwell uh, mm. during that same time. So I'm the older child. As teaching in Makere at that time, my salary was supposed to be three fifty thousand shillings. Whoa. I had my masters, I was on PhD, I wasn't on the payroll, uh, and even the three fifty used not to come many times. Actually, by the time they put me on the payroll, I was in areas of like seven months. Oh. So my dad was so sick and I needed medication for dad. And my husband, between us, my husband was earning 1.2 at that time. It just was barely enough to take us around. Yeah, he would get uh, bonuses here and there, but it was quite tough. Mm. So in my distress of uh, finding a way to help dad, I woke up one morning and I was like, but I teach these women at church to cook at no cost. Why don't I do a cooking class? So that I get money for mm. that medication. Mm. 
So I go on Facebook. I remember 9 a.m. I put up an ad. I have a cooking class. I used to call them cookouts because it used to be just a, a Saturday, three hours. So I said I have a cookout. I had a friend who had a house behind Victoria House mm. in Mutinda, mm. in Bukoto. So I said behind Victoria House this Saturday from 9 a.m. to midday, 50,000 per person. Then mm. I put a menu. Like I actually probably reproduced one of the menus in Apples of Gold. Mm. And the women, I by 3.35 p.m., I had 20 women signed up. Whoa. They had sent mobile money. I had one million shillings on my phone. Whoa. So anyhow, I, I, I love food, so I always knew where to buy what. I knew, I knew downtown, the place where there is all these cook, crockery mm. and so I buy stuff. I uh, used some of my friends' things in the house and I taught the women. And I made a profit of 350,000. Mm. The same, um, for 50,000. So it was even a hundred K more than what Makero was giving me, which mm. used not to come. In a month. So, I went, bought my dad's stuff, and then it still didn't ring in my mind that this is a business idea. <laughs> like, I, I had solved my issue, and that was it. Wow. So then, that became my thing that I always did when I was broke. Oh. So whenever I had a need, I called the cooking class. Now remember, the first cooking class... Uh, I spent all most of the money on buying the pans and da 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 da. So the next cook, subsequent cooking classes, I didn't need to buy. Yeah, you made a bigger. So I yeah, I would make like seven hundred k in a weekend. And so whenever I would be broke, I would just like, what can I teach this time? I think we can. Yeah, I think we can bake. Then I do. So then friends started asking me to teach them. And then I called them to buy kitchen at home. So they would always say, we are going to Uni's kitchen. <laughs> so they would come because people who are really, really close to me call me uni. Yeah, yeah. So they would come and then over time I said, why don't we rotate to your kitchen? So they would be like, hey, uni has brought her kitchen to my kitchen. Oh, oh. <laughs> so then we started to move like that. Yeah. And then in the third, third, fourth cooking class, there is this lady who kept looking at me while I told now, my primary gift is teaching, yeah. and I guess that's why you thought that mm. maybe my PhD is mm. in people mm. and what, because mm. I really engage people. That's mm. why I told you that even in engineering, what I enjoy mm. is engaging people. Mm. Like how God made some apostles, prophets, yeah. whatever. For me, it's really teaching. teaching. Yeah. So, and even I know it. I know that I'm a good teacher. I know, give me a topic, I'll explain it. I will engage the audience. I know that. Mm. I know that. And so, um, when the lady was looking at me, I thought, I thought, well, I think she's fascinated. She's like, wow, she can teach well. Because that's something I've been told even at campus. Students really loved me. They loved my classes. That, like, in my class, people used not to dodge. Of course, I was strict, yeah. but the students would come on time. Mm. And they, they are my friends out there. And they would be like, madam, we would enjoy your classes. We would laugh. We would relate. And so I thought, She's just fascinated. I'm like, I've met people like her before who drool. Mm, so, mm. after the class, she came to me and she said, do you do outside catering? Do you do wedding catering? I said, no. She said, well, I have a wedding in three weeks and you have to do it. <laughs> and I said, no. She said, yes. She said, so think about how much you want to charge. Tomorrow I'm coming to church with my fiance and we'll pay you all the money. <laughs> they had to be okay. Yes. <laughs> By force, by fire. So I go home, I calculate a few things, I send her message, I said 12,000 per plate. That's about seven, eight years ago. And she said, okay, we have 300 guests. So they came to chat the next night, gave me 3.6 million. Mm. That's how you need to get started. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I go to, I go downtown, I buy what I need. I used to mentor, I've always mentored young people. So I used to mentor a group called uh, vineyard, my mm. my baby sister leads the group. Mm. Uh, they ha she has uh, there were young campuses. So I went to Vineyard, I said, guys, I have weekend plot. Take a mm. I'm going to pay you twenty K per person. Are mm. you in? They said yes. So that was my first people to work with. <laughs> so we cooked and we took the food yeah. and on that wedding three people walked up to us and they said we want a service. Mm. And so I, in my mind, we I thought I'm going to go. Yes. So in my mind, I was like, I'm going to cook for Martha and, and, that's and, it. and uh, yeah, I'm going to cook for the Bokus. And I don't, I'm like, I don't even know where I'll put the equipment. We left that venue with three bookings. Three bookings. 
And so Yoni's kitchen started. But still, I used to, I, I, I used to put the stuff at home. And if someone called and they said they have a wedding, they would cook. If nobody called, I slept. <laughs> now, so how does, do I start to be fully, you know, like start to run yeah. this? Over time, I started to get a few workers because my sister's friends started not to be available. Yeah. And so when someone would have a wedding, I would have to look for people. And some of the people I started with, I actually still have them. Mm. So then I started during the week to wonder on days when we have no event, where do these guys go? Mm. And then I'm like, won't I also call them one day and they got a full-time job? Mm. And I'm like, how do I put them in a position where they have something they do? Mm. So that's when I said, let me look for corporate companies to work for during the week. So for me, I was just looking for work for my people. Mm-hmm. Not even like, let me make, no. And I wanted them to be doing something during the week mm-hmm. so that when I need them over the weekend, they are available. That is how you miss the chance. So now you have three locations. So now we have three locations, yes. Hey, I don't know what to make out of that story. But you see, again, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if, if if someone asked you, uh, Eunice, why are you in business as a Christian? I mean, there are very many answers you can be able to give. Yeah, sure. And uh, of course, uh, at the top of my mind, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think the number one is you need to make money. No, that's not really the number one. So, well, uh, honestly, for me, it has always been about meeting a need. Yeah. And most of the needs have not always been mine. So, like I told you, it started with that. So I met dad's needs. Mm. Then for some reason, when I started to to do catering, most of the people that we attracted in the business were impoverished. Mm. Because we needed someone. Mm. Like, yeah, mm. can you carry kind of heavy loads? Mm. Now, you know, in this country, a degree holder is not going to come. Yeah, right yeah. There. So, you know, that Kale Rene did. Mm. You know, that, you know, so... I got people who were needy. Mm. And so then my drive so was, you give them an how opportunity. do I give them an opportunity to be better? Mm. How do I make sure their children do not turn out like them? Mm. So it became like that. So actually, even at the start, some of my pricings were flowed mm. because I was because not of looking that. so much yeah. to making the money. Mm. So it, it has always been, how do I make, you know? Mm. And then at some point, it... <laughs> Of course, God rebuked me about this one at some point. But at some point, it became about how do I get God's name glorified? Mm. It was like my responsibility. Mm. Eh? Because over time, then I started to notice that there were not too many believers representing God in the business arena. Yeah. And I realized that even as believers, when we have um, business symposiums, conventions, and we want to call people to talk about business, that the, is the point when yeah. you have to look out outside of the church. Yes. Mm. Like, but wait a minute, how God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Mm. How come we do not, you know, we don't have those examples? So it looked like I had appointed myself an ambassador. Mm. So, in order for me to do that, I wanted to do this and succeed at it so I become a voice. Mm. Because also, I realized some of the believers they were calling to talk to us about money had the theory. They had the theory, and they told us the theory. Say this, hey, the Jewish Jah principle. What? Mm. What? what are you had those things. Mm. Eh? Mm. But I'm like, but man, a believer who is down there, mm. who has tried to start a business, and they cannot see the five hundred thousand in the pocket. Where are they going to get the ten percent for the job? To save, yeah. You mm. get it. Eh? Mm. So for me, I had appointed myself as an ambassador for the church. Mm. Of course, later I realized that even Eunice Kitchen is a vehicle for my teaching ministry. Mm. Because God wanted me to be a voice, yes, in the business sector, but I needed to be a voice that is tried and tested. Mm. So you find that people who come for my coaching classes, when I'm teaching them, I use real examples. I say, no, when you are doing strategy, you do X, Y, Z, and this is how you make it work, and this is how you make your projections work. When you finish, because they are things I do on a daily yeah. And most people usually when they come in, those are the testimonies they give. They, they, you know, when they write back to me, they say, ah, the fact that it was practical, mm. the fact that you know that it is possible for your cash flow statement to be showing money, but the profit and loss statement showing zero, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's always been about meeting a need. Yeah. Mm. But then again, at the end of the day, 
we need to you, you, the point you've raised of excellence in the business itself you know god rebuking you that you you, you are throwing away money you're not charging the, the right way the excellence uh, that you're supposed to inject into it as a believer it has a standard there's a standard that your business is supposed to you know exude and so on and then again at the end of the day you're, st- you're supposed to make a profit yeah because uh, if you're not making a profit why are you in it in the first place right so if you are to break down these things probably just share a little bit uh, guys who can get an, an opportunity to, to get coach with you maybe later but if you were to in a nutshell share some of the things that you will you will instruct so to speak a christian or a believer in business whether they are starting or they are continuing what are some of these fundamental pillars some these principles that they need to adhere to wow first of all the business idea needs to be really really examined you don't just wake up in the morning and you say this is the idea let me roll yeah and let me use the the story of creation <laughs> if this whole creation thing was a business idea the bible says that in the beginning the spirit of god was hovering over the waters mm. it was over the surface of the waters mm. now the bible doesn't tell you how long it was there mm. could have been a thousand years mm. could have been a million and he was hovering and hovering and then when the bible the bible says when god said let there be the bible doesn't say and then when the mountain went there he realized it was wrong and he changed it mm. no What does it mean mm. that during the hovering mm. God got a sense of the best place to put Mount Everest is this place mm. the best place to put Elgon is Uganda mm. the best place to put Renzori is Kasese the and the Nile to put the source and of the Nile so is Uganda he said let there be because he had conceived the Beautiful idea vibe. and he had hovered over it everything just went to the right place Mm. So when you mm. want mm. to start mm. a business hover over the idea brood <laughs> over it yeah, brood this. over it brood over it yeah take take your time take time and brood over it and is, someone is who said but you need one time did you take brooding over it for me now i look okay first of all when you listen to my story and you listen to the journey that i took teaching up as a gold for seven years and the way everything came and the way all the connections came and the way the confirmations came that was my brooding so when i actually look back the brooding happened during that time mm. okay i have businesses i started without brooding over them looking at the idea keenly and having intelligence over that idea and i i have done 13 businesses that failed eh. yes you, I, like, you, did, yeah, like you didn't mention CV, any of those things eh, on my cv i have 13 failed businesses as in like completely failed, failed totally no point failed. can't be resurrected failed no nothing can't be resurrected eh. okay because you, you you're tracing that to the yes. to, to the and, bit of and, not and hovering there are people who, ha- who are doing those same, those ones, same businesses and they're they working and for me it didn't work yeah there's a guy there's a guy um i think he's called aden kamugisha mm. He has a farm in uh, Masaka. Mm. He says the exact same thing that you've just said that the fact that I am doing this business doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody else. Nope. And the fact that you have failed in that particular business doesn't mean it's going to fail for everybody, everybody else. True. So the hovering is critical. Very critical. So for me that is because in hovering is where is how you are going to create a lasting Mm. that is it's in hovering that we see that nothing that god has created has failed like we don't wake up in the morning and say gravity is not working <laughs> and that will not happen it yeah. doesn't matter how many powers of darkness there are <laughs> we are not going to call a prayer meeting to make gravity work you you get eh? so yeah, that is the first thing mm. mm-hmm. now the second thing is understand money and understand how money works and money is a spirit and it gravitates towards where there is knowledge That's something actually for me I know that the amount of money God has allowed me to be a uh, steward over is the one over which I have enough knowledge. Hey, you need this pack. <laughs> You're going very fast mm. on a very powerful principle. First of all you said two major things and I've forgotten one. Mm. But the first one you said is that money is a spirit. Yeah, understand money and how money works because money is a spirit. 
and it gravitates towards where the most knowledge is knowledge about the money yes knowledge about how it works oh knowledge about the workings of the money yes. itself if you don't have that knowledge then the less money, money you have money usually runs away from you So what you're telling me Because you see I've, I I actually I have very very interesting conversations with God. Yeah. <laughs> My relationship with God is is like how you're sitting here I yeah, have such we, conversations. Mm. And there was a time God said, "Yunis, if by giving you only 10 million shillings you've lost it totally." Why would I give you? How do you want me what how do you want me to trust you with 1 billion? You will ashamed the entire kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like I can only risk the extent of shame I can take. Ouch. And I said father like really he said yeah he said Ouch. I usually measure I'm like this is how much shame we can afford. <laughs> and so we push how much we can afford. Oh. And, and and that's how money is. I mean let me tell you there are believers who think that because they have a lot of faith they are going to tithe from their gross cells and they like to tell the story of um, what's the name of the gentleman who wrote god chasers uh tini tini yeah tommy tommy tini tommy tini mm. they like the story of tommy tini that you know the guy he sold books and even reached a point and instead of giving tithe of 10% he gives giving 90, 90. Mm. And I usually just sit in the corner like eh, eh. you know I when I'm teaching my people in my coaching classes it shocks them how they type you know when you do gross sales of 20 million mm. you've not yet subtracted the indirect operating the direct operating costs mm. you've not subtracted the indirect operating costs you've not subtracted depreciation you're using bonds for heaven's sake they are mm. depreciating mm. tomorrow you're going to spend much more in uh, in replenishing in them, replenishing them. Mm. or even you know the guy who comes to maintain and everything so you've not subtracted that even when the taxman comes and says how much did you make you tell them 20 million so of course the taxman is going to tax you over 20 million and then you will say you are a hey, they are thieves but you say you are a hey, asks you you questions because your i wasn't there when you were selling you understand mm. so by the time then loan interest everything by the time you subtract some of them then they realize oh my god the actual i made was 600,000 mm. so mm. actually mm. your mm. tithe should be 60,000 at that point but then they tithe 2 million 2 million so basically what they have done is they have eaten they have they have they have god has given them the seed, seed. And then they have they've eaten, they've part, of the eaten part of the seed and they've even taken back part of the seed and then they've mm. gone back to God and said I want seed and God is like what okay, sort you. of imbecile is this yeah. you understand what I mean yeah. okay I've used a bad word <laughs> but <laughs> you know like God is in shock is like no wonder the bible says my people perish, perish for, for lack, lack of, knowledge. of knowledge so the entire business is perishing because you don't understand how finances work and I keep telling people when you see cash in that drawer it doesn't necessarily mean that that business is profitable mm-hmm. it means it's liquid but it doesn't mean it's profitable now in understanding money you understand pricing you understand pricing strategies you understand marketing you understand market intelligence i mean i tell people that jesus spent 30 years on earth not growing like it wasn't it wasn't because he needed to grow Mm, no mm, jesus mm, was the son mm, of god when he was in the manger mm, he already had the dna to make the miracles like he didn't need to turn 30 like he didn't need a permit 30 wasn't the magical number he, yeah he didn't need a permit he didn't need a miracle permit but now when you're 30 you we have the say certificate. Go, ah, ah. Mm. jesus was doing market intelligence mm. now Hoovering. believers don't do market intel- they don't do market research mm, yeah mm, they mm. just say unis is in chirinya But I'm going to place this big. But I'm going to Saturday when there ah there can be many people. Let me put put mine up there. Next to hers. No market intelligence. They don't understand customers. They don't understand who a customer is. They don't understand internal external customers. They don't understand customer behavior. They don't understand if you are going to do business, you must understand money and how money works because money gravitates towards where most knowledge is. I've told you even me what I have now is a representation of how much knowledge i have of money if i have knowledge of money if i have knowledge of how 100 million is managed that's what that's what you're going to get 
So even you, when you're seated there. My goodness. Yeah. That, that's, uh, Lord have mercy on us. So this, even people, even understanding people. Yeah. God is not God. You know, God loves other people the same way he loves me. Yeah. The same way he loves you. So if God doesn't want you to be hurt, by other people. Yeah. He doesn't want other people to be hurt by you. So God is not going to make you a manager over 1000 people so that <laughs> you destroy <laughs> egos of 1000 people. You can't manage your maid. God is like we can't risk oh, wow, wow, rehabilitation wow, wow, wow. of 1000 people. So you will keep on having your business where you aye, actually aye, aye, have aye, only aye, one yeah, worker. Yes. Lord, Lord, Lord. It's about increasing our capacities. Exactly commensurate to whatever capacity we have, that's what we're going to attract. That's what we're going to get. Exactly. So that's principle so number two. So for me, I actually, I actually honor even non-believers who have millions of workers. Because that, for me, usually is a pointer that they can be trusted. You see, Eunice, because this series in this month is specifically about believers, Christian believers in business. And there are some misconceptions we normally have that I am a child of God and uh, given that I'm a child of God, I'm born again, I'm demon chasing, I'm spirit filled. Does it mean that that's, I have a head start? <laughs> Yes and no. <laughs> yes, because man, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is in, you. in me and you. Yeah. But you, how many people have you raised from the dead and many in us also oh, raised? You get what I mean? Yeah. But it is not a lie that that power is in you. Yeah. The one which was in rain had bonky is, is the in same. me. Yeah. But me have not even raised the fly. <laughs> <laughs> or your pet that died. Exactly. But that is in me, you get. And yeah. that power is not in the other person who did not accept. Because the Bible says that to all who accepted and believed, he gave the power to become children of God. Mm. So that gives me a head start. Mm -hmm. But that power can be inactive. Dormant. Dormant. And it's on the inside of you. So the guy who doesn't have the power, mm -hmm. he uses the principles and he goes Thank way ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah. Without the power. Without the power. So if with the power, I also apply the principles. Imagine. Wow. So anyway, principle number two is about knowing how money works. Yes. Number one is brooding. Brooding, then Clarity knowing how money so works and then also understanding people. Understanding people, yes. that's number three. Human resource, <laughs> understanding people because in business we are going to work with people and our stewardship includes stewarding people. That's mm. part of the resources. Mm. And so if you don't understand people, I mean, let me tell you, this morning when you came, I had made a decision that uh, Monday mornings, mm. very early in the morning, like 7 a.m. to mm. 9, mm. I'm going to start uh, getting into class. Every Monday I have to do a course and finish it. Okay. So I was on Udemy and I was searching courses. Mm. And I will be paying that thirteen, fourteen dollars every Monday, and I will study because the Bible says that study yourself to, to be show. approved, yeah. to show yourself approved. Mm. The servant who rightly mm. divides the word of truth, mm. you understand. Mm. And truth is not just the Bible. There is mathematical truth. There is biological truth. There is food truth. So yesterday, <laughs> sorry for cutting you short. I had someone say someone um, in high levels of ministry mm. saying that. Any self-help book mm. that has been written mm. is quote-unquote useless if quote-unquote he doesn't have the spirit. You know, uh, the Bible, the, 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 the scriptures mm. have been written to creation. They've not been written to, to the church. Believers. Mm. You get what I mean? Mm. That is why when the Bible says, give and shall be given to you. Mm. When a Buddhist gives, it's given to them in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Yeah. So when the Bible says that by his divine power, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness, mm. every human being has been given those things. Otherwise, God would be unjust. Mm. You could even take him to the court of heaven. Mm. You clean. Mm. So it has been given to mm, us, mm, you understand, mm. and to all 
men. Mm. That is why they use the exact principles of the word and they work for They them. prosper. You understand? Mm. You need to look out for... For me, when I read a self-help book that has not been written by a believer, yeah. usually what I do is I look for tenets in the word that in, are... In the Bible that, that are that aligning to what he's that. saying. And yeah. that is what makes you better. Yeah. That's why I tell people who probably are in business and they went to school, mm. I tell them that what should make you better than that person downtown mm. is that they don't even know the principles you learned in school. So if you learn everything in their college or you know, yes. whatever, in school the back of life. Door, uh-huh, mm. and then you add on it what you did in school that makes you better. That's mm. what gives us a head start. Mm. So even I, I read, by the way, for me there are many things I read and then I'm like, hmm. <laughs> This is actually this principle in the Bible, but Mm. this person wrote it like that. Mm. So it is your responsibility to look for the tenets of the word out of that self-help book. That person who wrote it did not sign a contract with you that they were going to teach you the word. Exactly. Even then when they were writing, they didn't say, come all year and teach you the yeah. word. Did they say that? No, no. They wrote what they know. Yeah. But when you read it, mm. it can write. make sense, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I don't throw it out. Yeah. No, that's why the Bible says test the spirits. Yeah, yeah. I even test the spirits. Like I even know how to read, and I'm like, no, 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 no. This one, no. They're even those written by believers. Yeah, And I yeah, read it, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. And then I read another one, and I'm like, ah. It's not even a no believer, but the Bible exactly. Says. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. I, even I actually, even when I read one verse, I should be able to mark out so many other verses. You've listened to my business nuggets. Yes. And many people ask me. How do you draw a nugget out of for God so love yeah, the world? Yeah. How do you draw a business nugget out of? But it is because I have start I the spirit of God on the inside of me has activated me to start to see that that scripture can work in all areas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I tell my workers. I'm like, let us love the world so much that we give them something, that we bring a product. Because that's what oh, God did. Oh, 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 oh. So for you, if you see that scripture only in terms of winning Salvation, souls, yes. you're in trouble. Whoa. Okay, I can see why you're I told, a teacher. I told a, a, a friend the other day, and one of my girls that has just graduated out of her mentorship spaces, and she said one of the things she'll never forget me saying is, I, I told her, she came to me one time and she was feeling downcast, my husband, this and... And then I told her, I said, Joan, the world never promised never to leave you or forsake you. It's only God who did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I can see why you are a, a teacher. Officially, you, you you do teach business? Yeah, I teach business. I teach people business. People sign up? People sign up. Uh, like in January, in, in December, we'll have people sign up and they'll start in January. I usually do a six weeks a six week course. Mm. And in there, I teach them human resource. I teach them finance for business. I teach them networking. I teach them marketing. I teach them strategy. Strategy, you talked about strategy. Mm. And then I also teach them prayer in business. How to establish prayer altars and mm. how to pray the scriptures right mm. you know mm. so if you read about San Balat and Tobias and what they did so for you as a business person what would that represent and what do you pray mm. um, there was a time uh, recently I was teaching my people on the prayer altar about uh, the Gadites I don't know if you've read that mm. story about David when mm. he went away in the wilderness and he was fighting so mm. and the Bible talks about Gadites mm. and, and these were men who would dra- the Bible says that they would jump like 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 whatever on mm. the mountain Mm. And you know they would they would be able to work with both left and right hand. Mm. And I said, as a business person, what does it mean? It means hire multi skilled people. Mm. Yeah, because if someone can work both with the left and right hand, what does it mean? Mm. It means that this brain can cook, but this brain can market. Mm. This person can sit at the front, but this person can also do digital marketing. Mm. This person, you know. So I said, let us pray for guys, these guys who can be around us and fight our battle as a business. Like when they sit in front of the customer, they are like you. So we started to pray for Gadites, but then I said also, how do you identify a Gadite? So after we come out of the prayer room, we go and do the real work. Like for me, <laughs> EK, I have about six Gadites. I know that I know that I know that when everything is said and done, those are my guys that I'm going to call. My goodness. Ah, Eunice, this is so rich. It's so <laughs> rich. It's so rich. I, I'm so glad that we're having this conversation. And we can see, if you're listening, you can see that this, we're just scratching the surface. And now you're saying in December, 
people are signing up signing for up. six weeks. Yes. So six let's months. let's six six months. Yeah. So in a year, only six months. Two. Yeah. So I do six months, and then after the six months, I mentor them for another six. Like I follow you up, and I can really follow up. But when you sign up for the course, I can chase you. <laughs> like after two months, mm. if I realize that you're joking, I chase you. Mm. Yeah, I chase people, and they know it. They sign up when they know that they can. So chased. if if even you, if you paid your money, if you are to be mentored by Eunice, mm. you must mean business. Yeah. If you don't mean business, do you don't refund, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Because I tell you when you're signing up. Yeah. Yeah, I tell yeah. you when you're signing up. Right. Okay. Cool. So I don't want us to uh, st- start talking about those six months, but mm. let us give people the opportunity to sign up. Okay. It's in December that they are, they're signing up. Yeah, they up. sign up in December and start. In It January. starts in January. Yes. What kind of people are you looking at? Are you I'm looking, looking for? Especially at people uh, people who are who have growing businesses. People they who already them, established. They call them small and medium enterprises. SMEs. I, I call them small. I call them growing businesses. Because okay. I, God never called me to start a small thing. Yeah. So even if you just have a sandal workshop, me, I don't call you a small business. Okay. I call you a growing business. Okay. So I'm looking for people who have growing businesses. I've started. I don't know what to do. I, uh, finance is a problem. I don't know how to hire. I don't know how to fire. I don't know how to. I don't have a human resource manual. I don't I'm know. Not making how, money. I'm not making money. Mm. I uh, generally I don't understand the business. How do you strategize? How do you, I don't even have a profit? I don't. Those are the people that I'm looking for. Am but I, also I'm a believer. But I don't know how to run this business as a believer. Those are people I'm looking. For. Oh yeah, I'm a believer. I believe in God. I uh, want to do business, but uh, so how about the guys who haven't started, but they have an idea that Usually I want to do ones that. Usually, those like coach. That's now a coaching space, and that's mm. one on one, and that one can happen any time of the year, so long as you are available. Okay. Usually, I do that one for a period of twelve oh, weeks. Okay. But you can start even today. Okay. For that one, someone just calls me, and yeah. then I look at my schedule and I see my availability, and yeah. we can, yeah. And okay. then we we'll meet two hours every week for the next twelve weeks, and we help you to get a business idea, analyze that idea, hover over it, establish the systems, write that plan. We even can help you to put it on the ground, and then we can help you to monitor it for like a year. Of course, you will pay for that monitoring time, and then you'll be well on your way. So guys, you can listen that we have incredible resource here, an incredible resource in Christian business. I I I really don't know because when I, you guys should be here. When I look at Eunice and the nuggets she's she's this just scratching the surface. We've not even gone deeper. We've, we we we've not even said anything. There's so much resource in Eunice that uh, you guys you need to be aware of and you need to start tapping into it if you're a A Christian out there, you're a believer. Even if you're not a believer, Eunice is in the business of helping you and your business to thrive. Yeah. So, Eunice, where do people get you? Usually, um, write me an email. Yeah. Uni Adu, it's E U N I E A D U at Gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. That's Uni Adu, mm-hmm. or you send me a message, uh, WhatsApp seven seven four six eight one four nine three. I may not answer immediately. Mm-hmm. I can be busy, but even if it takes a day, I always go back mm-hmm. and I answer all my messages. Mm-hmm. And then I can give you a schedule, and then you can do a short interview for me to know where you're at, mm-hmm. and then we'll let you know. Okay. So, guys, you've listened, you've heard. That's where you can be able to find Eunice. Uh, about your books, these are devotional. Yeah, I do women's devotionals. Yeah. I've done for the last six years. It's been a, um, it's been a, a hard copy kind of arrangement. Yeah. I want to engage the people a bit more, mm-hmm. and so I'm making a decision to do it online. Mm-hmm. So it's it's. I will first. I will try it online for a year, and I see how you it will goes. Brood so over I will it. brood over it. So <laughs> next year we won't have a, a you know, a devotional. A, a we will copy. have a devotional, but it won't be hard copy because mm. I feel I want to engage with the ladies a bit more. Mm. I want to know what they are reading, are they following through, what's going on. So we are going to have a sign up uh, season coming in November. Mm. So people will sign up. So we we'll create sort of like a mailing list and you know group, and then we'll be following through like that. Uh, the other books, 
Unfortunately, I produce. They run out. Mm, I pro- you know, so right again. now I don't mm. even have you many have, don't copies. Have a copy. okay. But usually I put them at our locations. Okay. I put at Unis Kitchen, Mukono, mm. Chirinya, Wengere. Mm. Usually when you walk in, mm. find one of the books. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've come to the close of today's episode. We've been talking to a wonderful human. Uh, I have no words. Dr. Yunis Adubango. Yes, you got that right. <laughs> she has a master's in engineering and she doesn't care about it. She cares about people, about business, about the kingdom of God. And when she's teaching, uh, let me just... Uh, so, Eunice, thank you so much for gracing the occasion. I know you're a busy human being. We've been trying to do this meeting, but I, I'm glad that it has happened. This month, when we've been talking to people about believers in business. Bye-bye, and God bless you. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.